Good day, uh, welcome to this video. For the people that are new to this channel, please consider subscribing and please go to the playlist section of the channel and go and click on the question everything series as well as the moments in time series and watch those videos. It might just change the way you think about South Africa as well as the rest of the world. Now on to this video now. This video will lead into an article uh, where Becky Tsele is uh, trying to find out what happened with regards to a device that was bought that would spy on people in South Africa. And this is something that you need to think about very intently. But before I tell you about that, uh, I just went for a walk with my family. And on the way out, we actually forgot our mask so we went down the road and decided to come back to fetch him just in case uh, there's any issues and when you're a parent with four kids you need to make sure that the kids are not separated from you as the parents you don't want to end up in jail although the regulations that are used are absolutely ridiculous so we came back and i made a video on my phone at the time to make this video i deleted my last video that i made at Melkbos strand and I completed the video and after the video was loaded and I wanted to upload it to YouTube, the phone started uh, actually saying that my storage is full, which is close to full, which often happens. And then the app started acting up all of a sudden. Now, I've never seen this happen before, but it made me think that these videos are actually stored in a cloud already it's not stored on your phone and what happened was the video i had deleted to remove of my phone to cause more space after several restarts of the phone reappeared on my phone all the items that i deleted and deleted from my bin were back as if they were never removed and the video that i had just recorded talking about my frustration over the fact that we had to walk back home to fetch masks was gone and it's still gone now but still I can tell you about this now I'm not working on my phone at least I have a normal camera that is not connected to the internet that's connected to my laptop and therefore cannot be externally controlled well in any case no one's made an effort to do that yet now I've known that my phone has been monitored for an extended period of time but the extent to which I am being influenced right now is becoming very debilitating. Um, and I'm, I'm being influenced in more ways than just with my phone. Uh, we will be making all efforts to move as soon as possible to a new uh, location. And uh, we will do this as, as a matter of urgency. But besides that, we will continue the work uh, because this is what we have to do. Um, no fight for freedom. Uh, and the effort that it takes uh, is going to be easy. We never expected it to be easy. I'm well aware of what uh, people that want to stop you from succeeding are capable of. But we will continue this work. We're not going to stop. But just to reiterate to what lengths uh, government will go to manipulate things, I want to cover an article uh, in News24 that spoke about uh, Becky Tseli that wants answers from top cop over police's links to failed bid to buy a 45 million rand eavesdropping device. Now, in the, the headlines to this article, it says Becky Tseli wants an explanation from police commissioner Kehela Sitole over a damning court judgment. So there was a court ruling over things that should actually stay out of the court jurisdiction altogether. So I find this fascinating, fascinating that the, the courts would actually get mixed up with intelligence work. The court action centered on three dubious procurement deals, one of which was alleged to be a cover to illicitly extract millions to sway the outcome of the ANC's NASRAC elective conference. And this is in the direction of President Sir Ramaphosa. Remember that most of the people that voted for him, those votes were bought by all sorts of squandering of funds. So if you think Sir Ramaphosa is clean, you're making a big mistake. It's not him doing this himself. His puppet masters are controlling what's happening behind the scenes and he is just uh, executing everything that they ask of him. Just like F.W. de Klerk did in his time in office. And I saw that with my own eyes. 
Sally ordered that Sitole and police top brass explain their involvement in the deals. Now it's not as if Beckett Sally is not aware of what's happening. But he has to cover his backside. So he's trying to do whatever he can to do that. Police Minister Beckett Sally put top cop Kehela Sitole uh, on terms giving him just 24 hours to produce a report on his role in a failed bid to splurge 45 million on a sophisticated eavesdropping device ahead of the ANC's 2017 NASDAQ elective conference. Now, you would want to know what has a political party's elective conference got to do with government spending money on eavesdropping devices to be used? Well, you'll find out just now. Sele's charge came after a ruling handed down by the Pretoria High Court last month in which Sitole was ordered to declassify a trove of procurement documents linking to a string of dubious deals. Now, to declassify documents is quite something. But when it comes to procurement, the court felt that it could order that those documents are declassified. Now, I can tell you they will be destroyed long before the court gets their hands on it. And uh, no one will see what actually went down. That I can guarantee you. Moreover, the judge, who you will be very familiar with, Judge Norman Davis, found that Sitoli and two of his deputies, Francina Vuma and Leonard Sumani, had breached their duties in failing to cooperate with police watchdog IPIT, tasked with probing the multi-million rand purchases. In a tersely worded letter sent to Sitole on Friday, obtained by News24, Tsele called for a report on three tainted deals at the center of the court ruling, one of which is the procurement of the eavesdropping device known as a grabber. Now, the first thing I want to tell you is we have procured many devices like this in the past, these devices are quite expensive, but not this expensive. And if you find out what this can do, you'll probably never use your phone ever again if you want freedom. And this is why I tell people there is zero freedom on any social media platform or any device that can connect to the internet or cell phone tower. The grabber, which is capable of intercepting cell phone calls and messages, was to be procured from a company called iView at a staggeringly inflated price, with, with similar devices available from between 7 to 10 million on the open market. But now, what would the balance of the money be used for? iPad investigators allege that iView was the conduit through which millions were to be laundered before making their way into the pockets of ANC delegates at NASREC as an incentive to vote for a certain faction within the party. We know who this faction is, Cyril Ramaphosa's faction. I have been requested by the president to respond to, a certain, uh, to certain issues in respect of the judgment, Sele wrote, adding that he had not yet been briefed by SAP's management on the implications of the ruling. The minister ordered that Sitoli produce a report which encompasses Sitoli's involvement in the procurement as well as that of Vuma and Sumani. I can tell you that Beckett Sele knows exactly what's happening. He is an ANC comrade. He was at the elective conference. He was part of all of the dealings. And he was one of the people that voted for Sir Ramaphosa to be president. He was probably another person that received the bribes and therefore got a position in cabinet. It's not rocket science. All legal costs that have been spent so far for this matter must be provided as well as a copy of the approval document authorizing legal expenditure in this litigation, he added. Now, this is Becky Tele trying to get out of the firing line and News24 doing what is necessary to make him look like the innocent person in the big story. Because remember, they play the New World Order narrative and Becky Tele has been instrumental in making this go down for Cyril Ramaphosa. Tele spokesperson Lerando Temba confirmed that Sitole had submitted his report on Monday. Police spokesperson Brigadier Vishnaidu said any correspondence between the minister and the National Commissioner would stay between them. Now, anyone that's come to my meetings and had uh, lengthy discussions with me often afterwards would know what we are capable of when it comes to monitoring, spying, tracking, tracing of people. There is no freedom anymore, and if we don't do things a certain way, we will lose even our freedom of movement, freedom of thought, and the freedom and the right to believe that you're a man or a woman. And I will do a unique video on that, because in my meetings I speak at length about the New World Order plan, which involves the entire idea of gender being removed in all facets of society. I thank you very much for watching this video. Please support the double of this 
channel. You can contribute by going to the description below the video as well as the first comment. The WDS Capitec bank account details are there. And if you make a donation, even if, if it's a 10 rand, there's 24,000 people on this channel. Small amounts make a difference. We can carry on to do great work on the ground. Without your help and support, it, it is impossible. And we are going to need to step up and rapidly step up what we are doing if we want to maintain freedom. So I really want to thank everyone that's made contributions. I want to thank everybody that's made it possible for us to tour. It's very expensive to tour. There is no money left when we are done touring. Um, all the expenses are always met and I'm so grateful that the people have come through to make our tour possible. But we don't live in anything lavish or driving fancy cars because of this we all have literally stopped our lives and everything that we've done before to focus on freeing this country this is all that we focused on now there's nothing else that we're doing this is uh, a work that is intense and we need all of your help we need you to help spread the word we need you to help circulate these videos and i thank all the people that are already doing that we need you to speak to your friends and family that you know people that will listen if people don't want to listen and they have other frame of mind, that is fine. Um, eventually things will happen to them that will bring them around and then they will have to listen. But at this stage, my family is undergoing uh, difficult times and it's not financial difficult times. We are being blocked and stopped at every corner uh, in many different ways. And it's not easy to deal with that. We, we always knew that it would be difficult. But this is the road that we chose and we're going to stick to it. Most people will give up at this stage, but this is not where we give up. This is where we fight harder. And the way that we fight is by spreading information, by continuing with the meetings, by seeing people, by growing the people, the collective consciousness on the ground, the people that want freedom, the people that don't want to be enslaved to a system, that, want to be, that don't want to be monitored, tracked and traced all the time. They don't want to be told that they don't have an option but to take a vaccine at work if they don't choose to do so. And that they are mentally incapacitated for believing certain things. Now, this is the future world that we are creating. Unless we change that future reality and we're busy doing that right now, we will continue doing that work and I really want to thank all the people that are part of that effort. And I want you to continue supporting us. We need the support. This is going to be a more and more difficult time. Please go and join the Facebook page, Double O Des. There I leave messages as to everything you need to know from time to time. I can put out a quick message there. It's not a long video that I have to process and put onto YouTube. So please, if you don't uh, want to go onto Facebook, you can still follow the link and see what is on that page. So if you follow the link in the description below this video and in the first comment, then you'll be able to go to the page, see the latest news. You just won't be able to comment if you're not uh, signed onto Facebook. So you can still see what is happening. So it's a perfect way for me to be able to communicate in one place. And I want to thank everyone uh, for your understanding. Many things will change. You will see on that Facebook page protocols I've put in place for future meetings. No future meeting will be held without those protocols in place. And we have to do this for very, very specific reasons. And in my meetings, I'll explain it to you. Thank you to all of the people once again that have supported us, that have given us accommodation, that have given us food to eat, that have given us donations. Even a five rand, a ten rand makes a difference. If we do it in large numbers, it will help. At this stage, only just over 300 people have been making donations over a period of time. So it's a small group of people that have carried the rest because we've seen over 4,000 people in our meetings. We don't charge anything in these meetings. We can only do this with donations. If the donations stop, the tour stops, unfortunately. I have my own investments that I need to look after and I need to make sure that my family can still function and survive with what we are doing. And the country decides whether this stops now or whether it continues. It's that simple. So for double days to continue, please support this channel. I thank you very much till the next video.